Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here. Today we've got another Linux review. Today we are taking a look at the Matei edition of Solus. Now, if you are not familiar with Solus or Matei, you know, you have no freaking idea what I'm talking about. Well, let me get started here. Solus is an independently developed uh, Linux distribution, so it is not based on Arch, not based on Debian, not based on Ubuntu, completely developed from scratch and just recently they uh, they created an edition that uses the Mate desktop environment which itself uh, uh, kind of forked and came from the old GNOME 2 desktop environment. Uh, GNOME 2 very popular when it was out and uh, you know a lot of people when when GNOME moved on to to uh, GNOME 3 a lot of people were not happy with the changes there um, there were more than one fork of uh, of the old GNOME 2 code and uh, one of the one of the projects that came out of out of that uh, uh, backlash against GNOME 3 was Mate, which kind of strives to recreate that uh, that GNOME 2 environment, while at the same time um, being more updated, more modern, that sort of thing. Uh, while I'm on the subject of the uh, the Mate uh, desktop environment, let me drag this over really quick. Always, when I talk about this desktop environment, I, I'll get tons and tons of comments that the correct pronunciation is mate. Um, and normally, I really don't care what the language police have to say, but just so that you know where I'm getting the pronunciation, this is on the project's homepage. And if you come down to the bottom, it tells you the name mate, pronounced mate, comes from Yerba mate, a species of holly native to subtropical South America blah 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 anyway like I said most of the time I don't care what the language police have to say and I'm not really picky call it whatever you want um, but uh, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna complain about the way that I pronounce it you know boom here's where the pronunciation is coming from anyway let's move on to the review so looking around at my desktop, this is, I guess you could call it mostly stock. The only thing that I have really done here is uh, I moved the panel from the bottom to the top. By, by default, they, they put it at the bottom. I moved it to the top just because that's my preference. And so we'll just run through real quick how they've got the, uh, the, your panel laid out. Over on the left-hand side, we've got our menu and it is their new menu called the brisk menu which uh, the the developers at Solus have developed for the Mate desktop environment I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second um, and then next to that we have all of the icons for our uh, for all of the running uh, running applications and you can go and you know click different ones to move that one to you know the the one that's in front or the one that you're using uh, as you can see I got quite a few things running right now uh, so we've got that and then moving over to the other side we've got all of our tray icons and then we have our volume indicator then we have our internet indicator so you can see uh, networks VPN connections all that kind of stuff uh, then we got time and date click on that you get a pop-up calendar and then next to that we've got a show desktop uh, uh, window so uh, if you go and you click that and you got say a bunch of windows open you click that and everything gets minimized uh, click it again everything goes back to the way it was so fairly simple layout like I said I really haven't done anything to change that other than move the panel to the top but let's go back to the brisk menu like I said this is a a new creation by the developers at Solus and it is being ported out so that uh, uh, if you're on you know um, the uh, Ubuntu Mate version or you know other other distros that are running the uh, the Mate desktop environment you will be able to uh, at least eventually use this menu on uh, on those distros and uh, 
you know, like I said, it's still in development, early days, so there's uh, they're still working on it. But you know, it's nice and quick, very snappy. Um, got a real nice search bar. So let's say I was looking for LibreOffice, just start typing, and boom, it pops up like that. Or you know, you can browse through the categories, however you want to do that. Um, like I said, nice menu. Oh, you also got uh, you know lock screen, power, uh, and the current session, that kind of stuff down here at the bottom. Um, like I said, I'm really liking the the menu. The one, my one complaint in the current version is that uh, as far as uh, as hotkey control, um, you know, I prefer to be able to hit the uh, the uh, Windows or Super Key, whatever you want to call that, use that to open your menu or you know do your search for applications, however you want to say it. Um, in this case, currently they have I think it's Control plus F10, yeah, Control plus F10 to open it. And I was talking to uh, Ike, one of the developers, actually the head developer, and it basically he said he put that in place as a uh, kind of a temporary thing while he's working on support for um, other hotkeys like I said personally I would like to be able to just hit the super key and I'm not sure whether he's going to set it up so that uh, you know it'll it'll be set for the super key or it'll be set up so that um, you know you can choose your own hotkeys but anyway that's one thing that's coming down the pike that it doesn't have right now um, Personally, that's something I, that I really like to see in this, uh, just because that's that's how I always search for my applications. So since we are running the Monte desktop environment along with it, we get some of the really great uh, Monte applications. Uh, probably at the top of that list, and let me drag it over here so you can take a look, and that is the... Uh, Kaja, which is their file manager. Very nice application and in a lot of ways I consider it to be uh, this is what uh, what the uh, uh, Gnome's Nautilus file manager used to be before it had all the features stripped out of it. It's very flexible as far as how you want it set up. You know you can go dual pane like we've got here. Um, you can add this this toolbar you can get rid of the toolbar, you can get rid of the extra pane, you can go and get rid of the side pane. Um, just, you know, all kinds of options here on how you can set up, uh, you know, customize it the exact way that you want to do things. Um, do a right click menu and so you got plenty of options here on different things that you can do. Just, you know, very, very flexible uh, file manager. Like I said, it's what uh, it's what uh, Nautilus used to be. So let me drag that one out of the way. So, so uh, you've got that. You've got uh, Pluma, which is there we go, which is their text editor, and you know nothing special here, not really any special features, but once again you can go and customize the look and the feel however you want it however you want it set up you got some highlight modes here um, you know what kind of stuff you want highlighted that sort of thing um, like I said you know nothing it's not special but they've got you know the basics covered and being able to customize the uh, the document or the uh, the the text editor so that uh, you can read the document that you way the way you want it so that you can view it the way you want it I mean that's uh, that's so important and it's something uh, that I think the uh, the gnome developers uh, that freedom of choice I think that's something that they have lost in their vision you know they get this this concept now of how they want everything to look and feel and whatnot. <laughs> And I think they they they've gotten away from that. Let's let the user decide how they want things set up. So anyway, you got those two uh, those two applications, which I think are the probably the most important. But there's I mean there's other ones there. We've got a uh, the Eye of Mate image viewer um, color selection tools tool is pretty cool. Um, let me pull that up. 
and uh, so if you're doing a little artwork you're in Inkscape you're in GIMP whatever you're using you need to go and and pick a color and you need to know the uh, color code you can use this little tool to do that um, also if you need to know what a particular you know you're looking at a picture you need to know what that particular color code is for that color you can use the eyedropper tool you know click anywhere on your screen like it says to select that particular color you'll know what the uh, what that color is and you see like I just did there we can come over here to the tree trunk boom there you go like I said nothing it's not a real complicated tool but it it does a basic function very very well uh, so we've got that um, we've got a disk use analyzer the system monitor I've got the system monitor running in my background let me drag it over here just so you can take a look at it and uh, you can see you know how how much is being used on all my CPUs now I've got an eight core processor so that's why you see eight CPUs here and uh, you can see the pro the the CPUs are being used a fair amount memory wise I am using 1.4 gigabytes of RAM right now now just to put you put that in perspective for you uh, I am running a screen recorder I am running a webcam recorder um, I've got the file manager open I've got Firefox open I've got the system monitor open so I've got a lot of stuff going on and yet you know I've still got plenty of processing I've still got plenty of RAM um, you know probably of that 1.4 gigs of RAM probably half of that maybe more is being used up by the screen recorder so uh, you know you can see that running this distribution even if you had you know just like a little netbook with only two gigs of RAM you'd still easily be able to run you know most applications and I mean you know I'm multitasking with a whole bunch of different things going on right here and still you know very light on the resources let me drag that out of the way uh, what else we got on our list uh, the Monte terminal you know once again nothing special just got the basics covered uh, there's a Monte dictionary as well you need to look some things up and then also the Monte control center which I'll pull that open you can see I got a quick link right there and uh, you know basically all of your settings that sort of thing you can access from here you know your displays boom pull that up um, rearrange your displays your keyboard um, keyboard shortcuts uh, mouse management power management tweaking your sound network connections all that good stuff um, your appearance the look and feel that sort of thing and you know it's nice to see in a distribution you got all these kind of settings and they're available from one central location you don't have to go searching for all this stuff you know it's all you know combined and easily accessed through the control center so very nice so performance has been great I have had no issues crashes or anything like that everything is performed the way that it is supposed to <clears throat> um, and one of the things I, I am really liking here is that <clears throat> excuse me um, everything is well integrated you know there's a lot of distributions that you know maybe you get a couple of choices of which uh, you know which desktop environments that you want to use and you pick a certain one whether it's mate or, or whatever and then it really doesn't feel like it's been integrated well into the distribution it's just you know if, if you want to if you want to go and make it make the look and feel seem I don't know what do you want to say uh, in harmony or uh, or uh, consistent that sort of thing you're gonna have to do it yourself the uh, the development team at Solus had taken care of that it it really feels like this uh, this uh, Mate edition it's just as home on Solus as the default budgie desktop um, so having said that 
it kind of brings up the question well actually two questions first being why would you choose this over the budgie desktop well if you're a long time fan of the mate desktop you know what you might you know why not stick with what uh, what you, what you like um, no reason not to use it um, if you uh, at at this point in development I will say that um, the uh, the Mate desktop it is far more customizable than the Budgie desktop. Um, you just got a lot more options as far as how you want your panels set up, how many panels, where you want the panels, uh, all of that sort of thing. Um, and then another reason may be for those uh, those applications that come along with the Mate desktop. Uh, you know, great file manager, the text editor, you know, all of those. <clears throat> now, um, am I will, and that kind of leads to my second question, you know, which should you use, Mate or or the uh, the Budgie desktop, and, and which do I like better? Well, they're both good. Um, for me personally, uh, I really don't see, at least for myself, I don't see why, um, I don't see a compelling reason for me to use the Mate desktop over the Budgie desktop. Um, there's some stuff that comes along with Mate that I like. I like those apps. I like the ability to, the more custom, uh, the ability to make Mate more customizable uh, as far as your desktop layout. Uh, having said that, ha since I've been using Budgie for a while, uh, while now that I am using the Mate desktop, I am missing having that Raven side panel. I really like that. Uh, I miss the ability to open the menu with the uh, 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 with just the uh, the with the Windows or Super key. Um, so you know there's kind of pluses and minuses to each but you know for myself i i can't say oh geez you know now that i've i've run solace with the uh, with the mate desktop i have got to have the mate desktop it is so much better than budgie now um, they're both good um which do i like better i'm gonna say budgie but it's it's kind of um you know, it's kind of a slight advantage, uh, not not a huge thing for me. So, having said all that, I think that just about finishes this review up. I uh, hope that you've enjoyed it. Uh, I will leave links down below to the Solus homepage if you have not tried out uh, either one of the Solus editions, the regular or the Mate. Definitely check it out. Uh, excellent distros both editions are great um, so definitely check that out so uh, if you're not a subscriber please subscribe I hope to see you all on my next video and uh, questions comments all that kind of stuff leave it down below and uh, until next time enjoy your Linuxing <laughs>